this is actually probably going to be a bit of inspiration for you, um, for your book writing. Oh. So um, this is a quick review on Ibn Warak's latest oh, yeah. compilation. So having written and edited a small library of books on Islamic topics, the pseudonymous, pseudonymous, <laughs> that word is so hard to say, um, Ibn Warak has now collected some of his writings on ex-Muslims in a book with four parts, Free Thought and Atheism in Classical Islam, The Mysterious Treat. Uh, treatise of the three imposters, a reference to Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, the if influence of Ibn Rushd and Ibn Tufail on Western free thinking, and atheism among Muslims in the modern age. The author kicks things off with his characteristic verse, Greeks and Aristotle led to Muslim. Material, Muslim. yeah. Um, anyway, this is just a bit of his book, but basically this is very, very like great, um, just momentum building for the ex-Muslim community. Because like so this is intellectual history on a grand scale of the soft that of the sort that hardly any member in good standing of a university history department would dare offer, but the sort that makes the pace quicken and the mind race. No less empathetically, Ibn Warak explains his purpose. A history of atheism and free thought in Islam is a moral necessity. It gives, ne it gives necessary succor to ex-Muslims and provides evidence that many in Islamic civilization have shaken off the intellectual shackles of Islam. And what is more important, atheism can provide a new identity and show a means of living moral lives without the aid of Islam. The body of the of leaving the Allah delusion behind then takes up such disparate topics as the Dahriya materialist movement in Islam, um, the Mughal Emperor Akbar, the impact of medieval Arabic philosophy on Spinoza, and the number of converts to Islam in the West. Of particular note are the large surveys of ex-Muslims on Facebook and of female ex-Muslims. Ibn Warak concludes that ex-Muslims can no longer be dismissed as fringe lunatics, uneducated, or incoherent. They hold degrees in science from prestigious universities in the West, where they are no longer afraid to speak up. They have organized themselves into groups that support each other, forming ex-Muslim councils or writing their own atheist blogs. Leaving the Allah delusion behind serves as a monument of homage and encouragement to ex-Muslims. Yeah, this so that's is uh, very positive. It is very positive. And Ibn Barak, I don't know about his, uh, uh, somebody told me that he was reverting back to Islam or being spiritual or something, but he, he he's a bit older now. But he's one of the originals. Uh, he started writing his books, uh, which were, uh, the, this is pen name. I think he's shown his face now. Once yeah, he has. Yeah, once ex-Muslims started coming to surface and, and he's acknowledging those. But he didn't uh, initially because obviously he was like, I don't want to be the next Salman Rushdie, you yeah, know, understandable. Exactly. Obviously, we know it's a religion of pieces. Um, mm. So, so he he wrote a few books, and I think he's had impact on so many people. I think Ali Rizvi said that uh, his his book, uh, Ibn Warak's book, um, actually changed his mind as well, and it impacted a great deal. Um, to me, obviously, I didn't know about him. I I mean, in my case, I was more influenced by Dawkins um, and and these Western atheists. But again, I I I got to learn his importance, and I think he he did it before ex-Muslim was even a thing. He did it before Mariam Namazi, but again, it was a he was doing it in the old formula, write a book and try to change people that way. But apparently he's a bestseller in Pakistan and a lot of Muslim countries because he speaks in their language. Mm -hmm. um, Dawkins would never have... Uh, maybe he would have... Um, actually, I don't know. I don't know if Dawkins would have ever been that popular in Pakistan or these... Uh, actually, no, he is because they say that there's millions of. I think there's one million books downloaded in in Arabic. Um, in in, in I think his book was translated in Urdu. There's so okay. many have been downloaded there as well. Um, but he could not have become as big as someone who was from within their own ranks. Um, uh, but yeah, but Ibn Warak is, you know, he's one of the legends. It's, it's good to know that he's still alive and kicking, you know, like it's just going yeah, out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And like the consolidation of all of this information now and then like the might of the internet behind us and then all of our individual voices. And then he's right, the way we, the way we have kind of like coalesced and used our voice in unison, like the fact that he's saying, you can't they can't just be taken as like these fringe like crazy conspiratorial you know people who have just like 
detached from their community and gone to the West and decided to speak up. These are now legit people are coming forward and saying these exact same things. So like, I love that they were like shaking off the shackles of like even intellectual Islam. But yeah, it's good. It's just adding momentum to this tsunami and this wave of ex-Muslims and people like it's hard to deny now the actual surveys were mentioned here, but even that like we will never be able to touch on the real number. But even like when last week that gentleman came on and shared the um, we are here and we are with you uh, tw Twitter hashtag trending amongst like um, Arabic speaking countries to be on the side with of people that choose not to have a religion. Again, very, very like promising signs. If you like these videos and want to support me in my activism, then you can support me on Patreon or PayPal. Stay free, everyone.